Wednesday is a mess. But to say it's a complete disaster would be rather disingenuous. After all, it did do a few right things that I'll expand further on towards the end, so stick around for that. But the best way I'll describe it is that it's like watching the Titanic sink. All the grandeur and finance a show could want, and yet wrecked by absolutely baffling mistakes. If you were ever curious what stale and bland writing looks like, then here it is, cause I'll be going in depth into Wednesday, from its dull world building and railroaded plot lines down to the issues that their characters have. And let me warn you, some of them will leave you quite surprised. Starting off, the world of Wednesday cannot be more lackluster, as if the executives at Netflix had the show premiered fresh and hot from the production lines of their creative factory. It's like someone went down a checklist of what other notable YA shows out there had done and tried to Frankenstein it into Wednesday. You've got Hogwarts from Harry Potter, the random time-wasting competition arc, as well as the four distinct social groups from any teenage series, because as we all know from our own high school experience, everyone simply stuck to their own demographic, like a flock of birds. Aside from Wednesday and her family, I'd even go so far as to say that the writers haven't made any appreciable attempts at adding anything defining to the show. Most of what's in Wednesday could probably be traced back to another that had done it earlier or better. Here's a school packed with vampires, werewolves, and other magical outcasts that somehow finds itself in the crosshair of an ancient evil who is weirdly fixated about it. Oh, and throw in a small sleepy town too for good measure. <laughs> See what I mean? While that is necessarily not a bad thing, since expecting pure originality is unreasonable and impractical, I had still wanted to see some effort from the writers in trying to inject their own creative flair, just enough such that Wednesday can confidently have its own identity to carve into the genre. For a show that repeatedly hammered away at the message of being yourself and not letting others define you. Wednesday seemed to have done the exact opposite of what it's preaching. By doing so, its world filled with literally any monsters that the writers can insert at a whim miraculously achieves the impossible and becomes generic, no different than the other thousands of YA worlds out there. This drastically affected its storytelling capabilities as having to work within the tight confines of such a cookie-cutter setting meant that anyone could clearly predict how the plot would likely progress from the very beginning. Now, knowing the destination does not immediately discount a watching experience, as the journey itself could be the true value. Unfortunately for Wednesday, this does not apply to it. Its plot lines are box standard, predictable, formulaic. Considering the fact that Wednesday is also trying to convey three consecutive stories in its short 8 episode season, and you could probably guess why it won't be winning Emmys anytime soon. You have the Scooby Doo murder mystery Wednesday and her friends are trying to solve, Wednesday's character arc itself, and uh, a love triangle that every YA writer thinks their audience want for some reason. The main mystery plot revolves around a monster that has been killing and terrorizing the students of the magical school of Nevermore and the citizens from the nearby Queen town of Jericho. Rather than being this enigma that outplays the viewers at every turn, however, anyone with two functioning brain cells can instantly identify who the monster is right after episode 1. 
The show does make an effort to veer you off your guess from time to time, and admittedly, the scene when Coffee Boy was injured did left me doubting myself, but aside from that, it was pitiful, because all the tricks they employed is straight out of a mystery book for Dummies 101. Look, if you're going to cast Xavier as the red herring, it would probably be better for both the viewers and the show if it wasn't so blatant. A red herring's entire existence has two purposes, to be the decoy and the surprise. I see dead people. It has to be the suspicion magnet that traps the viewer's attention such that the truth remains unnoticed. And only at the end, when it's revealed that the viewers have been fooled all along, can a red herring be declared successful. But this can't really happen when the writers make it so obvious what they are attempting with Xavier. This desperate pinning of suspicion on Xavier has, quite ironically, made the lack of blame on the other suspect more apparent and suspicious. But my main gripe with the reveal was that it didn't reward anyone who was playing detective and wanted to connect the threats themselves. Hell, not even Wednesday herself was rewarded for it. I cannot fathom how any evidence that she found could have led her to the correct conclusion. No wonder she accused the wrong person, not once, but twice. In fact, the only reason she knew who the killer was was because of a last minute kiss with Coffee Boy that showed her his real identity. All the crucial hints like Tyler's mom being a hide and Thornhill's boots at the lair torching were dumped at the very end as though the writers realized their time was up and was desperately throwing whatever they could to tie everything together. The entire reveal was such a letdown and disappointment because there was no payoff for following along with Wednesday's investigation. And so, you could see why I didn't have much hope for the other storylines when the main plot itself was so riddled with poor pacing and a lack of creativity, as is the current trend in the show industry it seems. With all that being said, you could probably be wondering what spirit possessed me to keep watching this show. To be fair, I can't blame you for that thought. The show would have been a drop for me if it wasn't for its three saving graces. Cinematography, cast of actors, and main leads. From the get-go, you can see the magic of Tim Burton at play. His experience in making other gothic shows like Cop's Bride and The Nightmare Before Christmas really shines through from the way he could bring colours to the otherwise grey and black palette in Wednesday, as paradoxically as it sounds. His camera work expertly merges the background with the scene associated with it, enhancing the emotion that it's meant to deliver to its audience. Netflix made the rare right choice of having Tim Burton on board to be the director for Wednesday, so it was all the more perplexing when I noticed a stark dip in quality of the cinematography after episode 4, and only to find out that he didn't direct the later episodes. I'm guessing they couldn't continue to afford him? Nevertheless, the scenes, even without the talent of Tim Burton, were carried by the amazing cast of actresses. Despite the shortcomings in writing, I can tell the actresses gave it their all to bring their characters to life. Miss Thornhill really reminded me of the campy villains you would get from the Scooby-Doo movies once she transitioned to her murderous self. The actress is able to brilliantly supply the unnervingly cheery and happy attitude of Miss Thornhill without it seeming out of place in a world like Wednesday. Principal Larissa herself acted by the talented Gwendolyn Christie, absolutely dominates any scene she's in. The aura of confidence and order that she projects really emphasize the role of power that Principal Larissa wields in the small town of Jericho. Yet, 
the one I was most impressed by was Jenna Ortega, who played Wednesday herself, despite the deadpan and emotionless child that defines the character. Jenna still manages to convey the snarky and witty attitude you would expect from Wednesday. At no point throughout the show did I felt Netflix's Wednesday was merely an original character wearing the skin of a favourite remake. Despite all I've said about the terrible writing, which I still do stand by, the strongest part of the show is perhaps Wednesday herself. She is an intelligent lady who has a clear weakness in social skills. What talents she possesses are reasonable considering her background. And it's just pleasant to see that the actions she's taken have consequences which she had to face and learn from, unlike some characters. <laughs> Yet, the writers appear to be conflicted at times on how they want Wednesday to be perceived as. One moment her friends are chastising her for using them as tools, but the next, they all forgive her like nothing happened. Even so, it can't be denied. Wednesday is the strong female protagonist that I would want more of in modern TV shows. Flawed and human such that they could be relatable to the audience and display a sense of growth throughout the story. All in all, Wednesday needs a thorough cleanup and reflection of what they want the series to be. Do they want it to be a serious mystery with commentaries about the current cultural climate or a teenage high school romance drama? There is substantial potential in Wednesday to be a great show, with complex characters buried underneath weak writing and tropes. Unless the writers wake up and stop following the same creative templates that are churned out these days, then it's most likely Wednesday will be just as its name says, merely another uneventful day in your calendar. <laughs>